morning. Um, I'm Lucas. I'm excited to be here. Hope you guys are enjoying the event. Um, as I was listening to some of the talks, um, I was very inspired and the, the, the speakers are brilliant. And I realized my job today here is actually really easy because I'm not imparting any knowledge of my own. I'm actually here to share with you some of the conversations that I've had with over uh, 50 um, engineering leaders that are navigating the AI area and really try to, to, to get some trends out of that and focus on what they're doing uh, in 2025. Um, my name is Lucas Mendes. I'm the CEO of Revelo. Uh, we are a platform that supports AI implementation and development projects, anything from developing new products to fine tuning LLMs. Um, but more relevant to today's conversation, uh, we have a community uh, of engineering leaders called Tech Teams Today. And it's a content based community. Um, we have a podcast, we have webinars, forums, events, local dinners, mostly focused on the US, expanding into Europe and the UK now. We had our first London dinner uh, last night. Um, so I would encourage you guys to join. Uh, but the cool thing about Tech Teams Today is that it allows us to have these deep conversations. Uh, with engineering leaders from um, all sorts of companies. So from early stage startups uh, to large enterprise companies, um, from engineering managers to CTOs, um, we get to have these conversations about real problems that they're facing while they're managing teams and growing teams um, and navigating uh, transitions. So today the idea is to get the three lessons that we took out from these over 50 conversations that we had during the first five months uh, for, uh, for 2025. Uh, so these are the three things engineering leaders are focused on in 2025. The first one is um, AI adoption within uh, their uh, engineering teams. They're pacing that adoption and keeping an eye on ROI. What does that mean? Um, first of all, there's no right answer. Uh, very different places at the adoption curve. I mean, different companies are at very different points of the adoption curve. There's no consensus. Nobody is late to the game. Nobody is ahead of the curve. It's really uh, no right answer right now. If you squint, you'll find a correlation, a tiny little bit of correlation between company size um, and AI adoption, inverse correlation actually. But it's actually more related to how old the companies are and less to uh, how big they are. So. Companies that are younger and tend to be more AI native, tend to be more daring in adopting AI tools and AI uh, based workflows within their engineering processes uh, than more established companies. Um, and obviously there are some low hanging fruit. There are some use cases that are um, uh, easier to, uh, to implement AI on, uh, but the more complex uses are really, really team dependent, company dependent, most of times product dependent as well. Um, so out of the 100% uh, uh, of companies that have some level of adoption uh, of AI uh, tools within their, their workflows, uh, about 68% are using AI cogeneration tools for boilerplate code. 45% of them are using AI uh, for no non-coding purposes, meaning documentation, uh, code search, so on and so forth, uh, just to improve productivity on those things uh, that are not related to, to, to code production. And about 41% of them are using uh, AI tools to improve test coverage, right? The rest of the uses, they're more specific uh, and probably in the future are gonna be more value add than this, but there's, there's still long tail. There, there's still no, no meaningful traction in the data that we're looking at. Um, however, uh, ROI is still a big, big question mark. No one really knows no, how to measure ROI for the adoption of these tools. Actually, adoption is the only leading indicator that some of these engineering leaders uh, are looking at. Adoption, tab exception rate, et cetera. Um, but that's not enough, and that's a consensus. 36% um, of the people that we interviewed actually said uh, that the ROI of these AI tools is going to be really a top of mind issue 12 months from now. It's starting to be a concern. They're getting some questions from CEOs and uh, people from the business side of their organizations, but there's no way to really measure it right now. There is a commonly accepted view that uh, AI tools have changed the role of the engineer from being the bricklayer to become more of an architect, many quotes here. Um, but the reality is that these tools cost a lot. And for the ROI to be interesting, uh, AI will have to do more than just be a better version of Stack Overflow, right? So it's, it has to do more than just uh, uh, facilitate the produ production of code. 
uh, that's still uh, TBD. If you're enjoying this, Lead Dev's got loads more to offer. I have written some blog posts for the website in the past. I know the recordings from all the conferences are up there. You should definitely check it out. Lead Dev can offer you a variety of things, from blogs, webinars, panels, Slack community, which is super supportive. So make sure you check out leaddev.com. Second trend that we're looking at, um, building distributed teams with a strong culture of ownership. Now, this is 2025. We're not in 2021 anymore. Um, it's post-COVID. Um, remote is now default. I mean, some form of remote is now default. Most teams have either a either the full remote um, or they have a percentage of the team that is not a co-located or they have a hybrid setup, or they have some, part, some projects that are near short or offshore, but there's some distributed uh, configuration going on. That's become default, but culture and connection need to be intentional. And the reality is that more than just learning how to work remotely, uh, most managers are now concerned about how they measure and how they uh, evaluate the performance of their distributed teams. And what they're realizing is that Yes, it's very difficult to track exactly what they're doing. And great distributed teams are not tracked. They're trusted. So there's a big, uh, a big convergence on this, on this topic of ownership. Really, people saying that the standout teams are those that really treat the problems like they own them. And that's great. And you can try to hire for ownership. Uh, but how do you manage that? How do you instill ownership into a team? Uh, and for managers, what that means is that giving autonomy and giving clarity of direction, it's actually more important than objective velocity metrics. Um, how is that being uh, done? Um, a lot of the teams that are uh, using some form of remote work are moving from output-based uh, metrics to business outcomes. So I think there were some talks yesterday, Rodney from Salesforce spoke a little bit about this, but. Um, the reality is that engineers and engineering teams as a whole uh, are being pushed by managers to have more direct customer exposure. So they're more in touch with what's going on with the business. Um, and that's a big shift. That's a big shift from uh, uh, ivory towers that were built in the past. Um, and some of the quotes that I really love about this is that you can't tell somebody what to do and how to do it. You can give them one of the two, but you can't give them both. Um, and this one, I really really love it. As a manager, you have to care about every single member of your team in three dimensions, autonomy, mastery, and purpose. A lot of focus has gone into mastery over the last several decades, and more recently, a little bit more focus on purpose, but now it seems that the weight is shifting towards autonomy. Um, all right. The last trend that we're seeing uh, really quickly is that managers are staying closer to the work without micromanaging, right? Um, what that means is that you know, everyone knows that management is 99% about discerning signal from noise. Um, and how do you um, do that? You look at the numbers, you look at the data. What we're seeing is that the, the most effective leaders, they're not just buried behind uh, dashboards. They're actually experimenting with tools. They're getting their hands dirty. They're shipping stuff. Uh, they're staying uh, uh, hands-on with what their teams are navigating. And it's not about being able to second guess or micromanage their teams. It's not about being the, the smartest in the room. It's really about being able to empathize with the team, live uh, the life that they're living, live their reality, and with that, be able to give them more clarity uh, in terms of, of direction. 50% um, uh, of the leaders that we've interviewed, including VPs and CTOs, they still maintain some level of technical engagement. That, of course, includes the occasional coding, but what it really means is getting uh, involved in deep code reviews, involved in the system design discussions and technical workshops. And it's a balance, right? You need to understand the reality and be able to cut through the hype whenever there's you know, new trends and new tools. Uh, but at the same time, you need to resist the urge of doing it yourself because you need to realize that with the proper direction, and it's your job to give the proper direction, your team can go a lot, a lot, a lot farther than yourself. Um, that's it. Those are the three things that we're seeing. Those are the three uh, trends that we've mapped during these uh, conversations. Um, one last thing I wanted to say is that the 
uh, original version of this presentation had seven things, and then I realized that I only have 10 minutes to speak, uh, so I cut it really, really short. Uh, but if you guys are interested in learning more and seeing uh, the rest of the content and, and listening to the podcast, here's a uh, QR code that you can use to join uh, Tech Teams today and access the podcast. Thank you very much for your time. That's it. Mm -hmm.